Hi, my name is Bill. Welcome to my channel. I started this channel a while ago um, because as a hobbyist and a builder, I have tons of projects. And pretty much all of these projects, I use YouTube to research um, tools and methodology and different tips and tricks to help me with some of my builds. And I started this video, uh, these videos as a way to hopefully give back and provide some information to those of you that have helped me so many times over the years. So this is a little bit of a different video for me. Um, I'm starting a couple of projects here, and in the interest of full disclosure, NAJ reached out to me, reached out to me, and they offered me the use of one of their lasers and some of my projects to see what I thought and how they could help me with some of the things that I'm working on right now. So a little bit different video, um, but here's the thing is I'm a tradesman, I love tools, and how could I say no? So thanks for watching. All right, here we are fully assembled. Uh, the assembly process was pretty easy. Um, the x-axis carriage is pretty much fully assembled and it just needed to be slid onto these uh, beefy y-axis rails. And then a matter of eight bolts. I'm not gonna go through that process because there are a lot better videos than mine out there that you can look at, but it's a pretty simple process. Overall, the fit and finish on all the metal components I really like um, as a CNC machinist. I like the fact that the belt tensioners here are bead blasted. All the edges are nicely deburred. All the edges on the rails are machine chamfered, which is nice. Beefy Y-axis rails. One of the most impressive things for me is this X-axis linear guide rail, which I did not expect. Um, precision ground hardened. There are recirculating ball bearings, uh, bearings within this uh, carriage in there that rides along in the x-axis and it adds quite a bit of strength and rigidity for helpful that should help with repeatability i'm pushing down relatively pretty hard on this without any deflection that i can notice um i like that the air assist hose is run through the carriage already done and it's just simply a matter of putting the fitting into the side of the laser module and your air assist is already routed comes all the way out the other side here by the electronics uh, one criticism, I guess, this cable guide, it comes with two of them, one for the y-axis, one for the x-axis, and I did manage to get this one on. Um, really, the documentation isn't really great as far as final detailed assembly. There are a couple of generic uh, wiki sites, uh, NAJ Wiki and NAJ99, that you have to search through, but the information is very general, very basic, and uh, you have to hunt if you need anything really detailed. So. If I had a criticism, the documentation would be one, but I did manage to get that, and I really like that because I did have routing problems with my old uh, Master 2S. Um, another thing I noticed during the assembly that wasn't, that could, I think, could have been improved is for the mounting of the laser module, you have these little tiny thumb screws which are somewhat blocked by the housing of the module. So I have big sausage fingers, so they were a little tough to get my fingers on and tighten, but Having said that, they do not require very much tension at all to positively hold this in place. I haven't noted any slippage as I've been actuating up it up and down. So this nice piece of aluminum extrusion to keep the cables in place. Very nice. So uh, yeah, it looks good. So let's get on with some testing. Before we get the Max 4 into the enclosure for testing, I do want to take a quick look back at the Master 2S just for comparison. This is the NAJ Master 2S, which I did buy with my own money. Um, pretty light duty machine. It was my first uh, foray into laser engraving and laser cutting, and it was a good machine for what it did. Um, made some little boxes here and cuts through three millimeter uh, ply, eighth inch plywood pretty easily. Uh, actually, it takes three or four different passes, so a little bit underpowered, seven and a half watt, seven and a half watt laser, uh, little motor mounts and firewalls for some of the RC planes that I do. Uh, the wife sometimes uses it for engraving coasters and things like that, so it does great for that uh, purpose. Um, it's pretty light duty. The actual corner mounting plates are plastic, so it does have a little bit of flex to it. Um, if I move the y-axis, you can see the main motor plates are all plastic, so not necessarily that big of a deal for what I'm doing, but I was really happy to see that the uh, 
the new version is quite a bit more robust than the old. Um, this one does have a couple mods that I did because it does have a manual Z-axis. You actually have to loosen up this screw to raise the laser up and down for reaching focus. I had to make an extension plate uh, 3D printed out of this blue plastic here. And then I had to do a homegrown air assist because this didn't come with uh, air assist built in. I had to make a modification here, which ended up working out pretty well. Um, models for that are up on Thingiverse. Um, if you search for Read and Space, you'll be able to find those. But both of those mods, because the new machine has a automatic Z-axis and built-in air assist routing, uh, much better, much better. One of the things I was concerned about was how well this um, new laser was going to fit into my enclosure, which I did make for the old Master 2S. And as you can see, it fits in there almost perfectly. The overall sizes and length and width um, are almost exactly as from the version 4 to the version 2S. So no concerns there. Uh, the tension adjusters stick out just a little bit, but that's not a big problem. Uh, my door closes just fine. I've got a room for my uh, pumps up there, which I'll talk about a little bit more later, and my exhaust fan is still there. I do have this vinyl, vinyl flap in the front, so if I'm using longer pieces, I can have them stick out of the work envelope of the laser, so no problem. Fits in there perfectly, and I'm really happy about that. Just out of curiosity, I did run a positioning and repeatability test using a dial indicator. So I positioned it onto the side of the laser housing and I sent the laser back to a kind of a central position in X and Y and then brought it back at a relatively rapid speed. And repeatability was well within a half a thou. Now just to give you a sense of accuracy, one of these graduations is about one sixth the thickness of a human hair. Uh, I went back even further, brought it back, and I was really pleased with the positioning accuracy won't get in too much about the z-axis but um, as far as setting my focus zero height it's simply a matter of um, homing the z-axis then I'll raise the laser module up a little bit high just for safety and then I'm going to send it down to my focus point which on this machine is going to be 44 millimeters from home And then once it's there, I'll use my height setting gauges. Um, I designed these and put these on Thingiverse a while ago, but I'll include a link uh, down in the comments. And set it 25 millimeters from the body of the laser. So I'll loosen up the thumb screws on the other side, drop it down till it touches, tighten those up, and then there's my focus height. And I'll just hold my Z-axis again gotta say I'm a huge fan of that really easy really repeatable very nice another great touch is these threaded holes that are equally spaced on both of the x-axis frames so these are threaded for uh, four millimeter screws so I was able to design a a locating system here for these these plates which help me quickly get uh, things squared up and I they're located up at the top as well so I can mount my uh, my squares and standoffs directly to the frame for easier squaring and locating of parts. I am running air assist for all the material tests. In the past, I ran my airbrush pump, which was, it worked okay. Uh, it was a little bit loud, and in cuts of over 10 minutes, it tended to get pretty hot. So I quickly switched over to a dedicated air assist pump. Um, it's much quieter, can run for long periods of time, uh, great air pressure, and I'm pretty happy with that. Started off pretty simple with this test and I'm really happy with the results. You can see on that first cut I did not turn on the air assist um, and it, the charring went away once I did finally turn that on. Very good test, very happy, single pass without pushing the laser too hard.
I did do some testing to look at the precision cutting ability of the laser. And when I did offset for the width of the laser kerf, which was something like 0.35 of a millimeter, uh, I did compensate for that and did get slugs that were almost exactly 20 millimeters long. And it was repeatable. I cut about a half a dozen of these things and they all came out extremely accurate. So uh, pretty happy with this test as well. Here's a test cut in one quarter inch Delrin plastic. I had a piece laying around. It cut pretty well at 100%, uh, 100 millimeters per minute. I did two passes with the second pass at a three and a half inch, a three and a half millimeter depth of cut. Uh, please note that when you do cut Delrin and overheat it, um, it releases formaldehyde. So as I was showing off the part, the formaldehyde fumes kind of started to get into my eyes and throat a little bit. Um, if you do cut this, make sure your exhaust fan is running and let it do its job before you open up the enclosure to get in there. Here's a test with black foam board from Hobby Lobby, 5mm. I had to try quite a few different settings to try to get a good mix of heat and speed to try to minimize uh, the foam recessing from the paper layer when it's done. You don't want to get too much of that. Um, I think some more testing is needed, but uh, these are kind of the settings that gave me the best results for now. Flight Test Foam Board is a material that I use qu quite a bit in my builds, especially for uh, RC airplanes, and it's one that I've never really had luck with with my older laser. At 7.5 watts, I can never get through the highly reflective white polystyrene foam layer, so I figured why not give it another try. This one has quite a bit more horsepower than the last laser, so I spent quite a bit of time trying different settings, different focal distances. I tried high speed, low power, low speed, high power, different depths of cut, numerous passes, but that reflective center layer um, just wouldn't let me get through it. Um, typically, I'd use it just to cut the, the paper on the top and then use an X-Acto knife to trace through it. Now, having said that, in a fit of frustration, I decided to max out the power and just try to blast through that foam layer just to see what would happen. And as you can guess, yeah, I started a fire. No luck with this material. So after that little fire, I decided to install the uh, NAJ door switch, which is essentially a, uh, an emergency stop. So it just plugs into the main board here. Um, I did design a little housing that mounts right to the side of my enclosure. And so while you're cutting, should you need to, hit the button, shuts off the laser, shuts off the travel, all good. So emergency stop switch from NAJ, I think it's only like something like 15 bucks, but I'll have this uh, 3D printed part up in the uh, a link in the description as well. So there you have all the testing I've done with the materials I have on hand. 
So in summary, overall, the mechanical construction, the workmanship, the um, thought they put into making improvements to this one over previous versions, can I think you can tell that they've been listening to the customer base and listening to the feedback they've gotten and made these improvements. Um, the overall capability of the new laser, the E80 laser module, it's very powerful. It um, Obviously, you can see it can cut pretty thick material. So cons or possible criticisms for the machine, not much. I think you can see by the testing that it's a very capable machine. It's very solid. It's very accurate. Um, it's well built and precise. Um, if I did have to, have to critique something, it would probably be just the documentation. Um, I'd like to see it consolidated maybe in one place more specific to the actual products and just less copy and pasted out of the instruction manual. That would be a nice thing to see. Um, ergonomics, I have big fat fingers. If you don't, not going to be an issue there. And even for me, it's really not an issue at all. Um, and because of the 20 watt laser, you're going to be doing a lot, probably a lot more cutting than you think you will. Um, and having said that, it'd be nice, especially with the active Z axis, to have this E stop. Um, it's an expensive button, it's only like $12 or $15, so it would be nice to see them chuck one of those in any box they ship out so you have it on hand. Um, not a big deal to add it on afterwards, but those are just my thoughts about things they could possibly do to improve. NAJ is having a contest for any products or art that you're creating with a laser engraver or cutter. It doesn't have to be a NAJ laser, so any laser that you may have is uh, eligible. So I'm eager to see what you're out there in the world creating, and so is NAJ. There are cash prizes involved. So please check the link in the description for this contest and submit what you have. When you're thinking about spending money to add functionality and capability to your workshop, um, hopefully this video gives you a bit more detailed information and what you can expect uh, from this uh, NAJ Max 4 laser and hopefully it gives you uh, more power to make a better informed decision on where you spend your money. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, keep a lookout for other videos coming up.